Hey everyone, Blue Goblin here to do a wrestling related review and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, NXT from the last week of June 2016. Um, yeah, this, um, now, don't get me wrong, I will admit NXT is right now my favorite part of the WWE right now. It's the, the show I watched the most more than anything else out on the network. And it's truly the shining point of the company right now, in my honest opinion. But I gotta be honest, this show wasn't really that good. Um, there are things in here that I did enjoy, but there were things in here that just like, just let me wondering, oh, I really went there? But um, let's just run through here real quick. Got the, uh, got my NXT title. First thing I want to point out here is, where the hell was Samoa Joe? Your NXT champion. I mean, you probably saw him in like vignettes or in commercials or something like that. I don't, I don't know, but I would like to have seen him like in a backstage promo or in a in a segment, maybe with William Regal or something. I would like to have seen him on the actual show. Your your champion. I mean, he shouldn't have to go out there and wrestle every week or defend his title every week. But I would like some semblance of he's there and. It makes him feel important that he's there, or it, or at least have him backstage watching a monitor, or watching a match, or a monitor, or something. You know, I would like to have seen the NXT champion as part of the show. Uh, the opening match was a women's match. Uh, Alexa Bliss against uh, Carmella. One thing I noticed right instantly was that Carmella, Carmella didn't get her, you know, Enzo and Cass style introduction. She didn't do her shtick where she's like the most fabulous chick in NXT and it's like bada boom realest chick in the room how you doing. She didn't do any of that. She just moonwalked on the stage, got in the ring and wrestled a match with Alexa Bliss. And uh, this match went on a little too long in my opinion. Um, Carmella's getting better. I will say this, Carmella is getting better. It's getting better for me because when the character, when, when Carmella's character first appeared, I didn't really care that much for her. And I always thought that she was getting the push when she got her title match against Bailey all those months ago. I kind of felt like it was a little too soon for her to be considered for a women's championship contention. But she's growing on me. She's she's growing on me every time I see her, and she's getting better in the ring. And she's got a very unique finisher. She's doing. She's got a very unique submission hold that nobody else in the in the company is doing right now, and I really like that. Uh, but Alexa Bliss ends up getting the win, and she's changed the name of her Sparkle Splash to the Twisted Bliss, and I kind of like that a little better. I'm really digging this Alexa Bliss. You know, you know, you know, pissed off, grouchy bitch kind of character, and I'm really digging this. It's a. It's good to see a heel actually. A, a heel, a heel woman, actually acting like a bitch and getting legit heat for it. It's just really good, and they're. It looks like they're instantly going to put her into a little miniature feud with Bailey, to you know build up, rebuild up Bailey's credibility to the championship match against Oscar. Um, not bad. It accomplished what it needed to accomplish, and you know got Alexa Bliss some heat, which was fine. Uh, the stuff with, uh, um, there's all, the, those sit-down interviews with, um, Shinsuke Nakamura and, uh, Finn Balor, I, I know where they were trying to go with this. I did appreciate that this didn't seem like your typical WWE scripted promos. It really didn't feel that way, and I dug that. Uh, they're doing a good job of building up a match that I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, building and building. But uh, Shinsuke's, you know, Nakamura's little sit-down interview segment, um, look, I, I get it, he's, he's from Japan, he doesn't, he doesn't speak English as well as some people would hope, um, but, you know, the Solid Monster pointed out, and I absolutely agree with him, now is not the time to bring Shinsuke Nakamura up to the main roster, because I just... I don't see it. I I also, I agree with him, I don't see Nakamura being able to pull off a 10-15 minute promo on a fucking episode of Raw. 
it ain't gonna happen, it won't work, it'll never work. Um, Nakamura is right where he needs to be, right where he needs to stay in NXT. And hopefully, he will be the one to take this belt off of Samoa Joe. Um, the other stuff in here, uh, Andre Cian Almas uh, beat some scrub. I don't forgot the dude's name. Uh, Almas just looks like a fucking male stripper. And I don't get it. I mean, I, I, look, I know there's athleticism and acrobatics in professional wrestling. I get it. But when that is literally everything you do is acrobatic with flip flops and back flips and, you know. Just relying on hard hitting high spots, it just doesn't work for me. You know, and then you're gonna say, well, you like Nakamura, he does flips and kicks and high spots. Yes, but Nakamura has a solid character. He has charisma. He can easily connect with the crowd. He is a definition of a flipping and kicking wrestler done right. You know, he has charisma. He's able to get a genuine reaction from the crowd just by doing what he does. You know, same thing goes with Finn Balor. Same thing go same thing went with Daniel Bryan. Hell, Daniel Bryan invented the fucking yes chant, which people still do to this very day. You know, but when you just do nothing but acrobatics and you got literally nothing else to back it up, it really just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I don't remember everything that happened on this show because uh, this show was just kind of eh for me. Uh, now, the main event segment, you know, with American Alpha and Gargano and Ciampa, you know, wanting to find out who's going to take on the Revival, and you have William Regal setting up a two out of three falls match between Alpha and Revival. I'm actually looking forward to that. I mean, it's like you have the potential to create what you had at NXT TakeOver uh uh, Dallas, when Alpha took on Revival, and you know, was it in Dallas? No, it was uh, in, it, no, it wasn't in Dallas. It was uh, the last takeover in Orlando. Take over the end. It was take over the end where Alpha took on the Revival. You have the potential to literally double the quality of that match, and I'm really looking forward to that. And then you have the Authors of Pain. Paul Ellering, oh my god. Paul Ellering could very well be the last of a dying breed. You know, a manager that doesn't have to say much. He has a presence there. He shows control over this team. I'm really digging this. And I think if Alpha doesn't get the tag team titles back... You can have Alpha get the tag titles back and you can have them instantly feud with the Authors of Pain. Or you can have this be a tag team feud that doesn't need the fucking titles. I would personally rather go in that direction. You can have a good tag team feud that does not involve the championships. You can really do that and you, you got two teams that I think could really pull it off. The rest of the show, it was hit or miss for me. The Finn Balor sit down segment, it wasn't really that good. Um, don't get me wrong, the show was not horrible. There was just so many things that just left me going, eh, you know, like, you know, where was Samoa Joe? Where was Asuka? You know, it's just, it was just an okay show at best. Um, but I have a feeling that these next, these next couple of shows are really going to step it up. And then we got the Cruiserweight Classic coming through, which I'm really looking forward to that. You know, it's like, yeah, we got some more acrobatic wrestling coming, I know that, but I want to see if any of these guys have any charisma, have any connectivity to the crowd, and who can actually, you know, tell some in-ring psychology, some in-ring storytelling that could really help, you know, really help this tournament. Um, you know, this particular episode of NXT wasn't great, but I think it's only going to get better from here. So there you go, there's my little, my little review of this particular episode of NXT. You may agree, you may disagree, it don't matter to me. I have my opinion, you have yours, that's fine. So, leave a comment, share, whatever you want to do. Please subscribe to this channel, don't forget my main channel, Blue Goblin 01, that's my main channel, or you can stick with me here on Blue Goblin X if you just want to see me talk about some wrestling. Alright, thanks again for watching everybody, I'll see y'all later.